All right, a group uh, drug was administered and attempted to see its effectiveness on uh, helping people stop being hungry. Um, we had two groups. So one group got a pill. The other group got a pill, which was basically a sugar pill. Those are known as placebos, right? So we're measuring the effectiveness of one pill over the other. Now, if the pill has an effect, the people who report being hungry will go down. If the pill has no effect, then the two groups are basically the same. Now, one would look at it and say, well, the placebo group clearly had more people who reported being hungry, so clearly the pill must help. Yeah, but that could be just a matter of sampling error, right? And that's what we're always having to measure is, is sampling error in these cases. So with that being said, what we're going to be testing is, is that P1 is somehow less than P2. So our claim... And symbols will be that P1 minus, or P1 is less than P2. Now, another way to write that claim would be that P1 minus P2 is less than zero. Okay. So, with that being said, we're going to do uh, part A. We're going to have to define HO and H1. So, HO is... Well, first of all, the claim. Is the claim going to be HO or H1? It'll be H1. So the claim is that P1 minus P2 is less than 0. HO is that P1 minus P2 is equal to 0. Okay? So there's part A. Part B, is this going to be a left tail, right tail, or a two tail test? Anthony? It is a left tail test. Now, that area is 0.05. That's given to you as a significance level. When you look up 0.05 on the Z-score chart, you get, survey says, negative 1.645. That becomes your critical value. Okay. Part C, you got to know the formula. Now, the formula is given to you on... The formula sheet that I have given you here. Were you going to be able to use the formula sheet on the test you said? Um, no. Not, this one. Not that one. A different one. Oh, uh, what is it? Does it not have the assumptions on it? It does not have the assumptions on it, and it doesn't have any words on it. So, like, it doesn't say testing the difference between two proportions. It just says. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, not my first rodeo. <laughs> All right, so for those of you that are listening at home, there is a big discussion about whether or not you'd be given this sheet as it sits, and the answer is an emphatic hell no. Um, you're given this sheet as it sits minus any words you see. So there's no test in the difference between two proportions. There are no assumptions. It's just a series of formulas. The formulas we need for this problem that we're working on is this one right here. So instead of writing it down and having no one be able to read it, I am a man of many talents. And by many, I mean one. Copy and paste. There you go. I can copy and paste like a mother. Look at there. Bam. All right. So moving on to D. Moving on to D. Part D says we got to fill in the pieces. Now, freaking hell. now, do we know P hat 1 and P hat 2? Uh -huh. What are they? 65 over 1.5 and 72 over 1.5. Okay. So, what you're going to do is it's uh, 65 over 125 is P hat 1. 72 over 125 is P hat 2. So, 65 over 125. And then, what was the other one? 72 over 125. 0.58. Okay. So, we're going to go... Uh, Z equals 
0.52 minus 0.58 minus 0. Wait, wait, wait. You rounded up even more? Please tell me you didn't say 0.6. I was feeling kind of dirty for saying 0.58. No, actually, I don't know how I mean, you know, if you're going to round up like that, you might as well just say 1. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, you don't want to round off the nearest tenth ever. No. Divided by. Now, what's P bar? P bar is X1 plus X2 divided by N1 plus N2, right? So it is um, 65 and 72. 65 plus 72 divided by 125 plus 125. 0.548, so we'll just say 0.55, or in today's case, 1. Okay. Um, 0.55, so we're going to go 0.55 times 0.45 over 125 plus 0.55 times 0.45 over 125. Remembering that all of this is over the square root, right? How, how come that was zero on that other side again? It's P1 minus P2. And P1 minus P2 is assumed to be zero because of the null hypothesis. Oh, wait, that first one's P1 minus P2 also? No. Same thing. Same thing. No, oh, it's P I, hat. I, I, okay, okay, sorry. Okay, no, you're fine. Alright, so we got a little bit of work to do here. We got 0.52. Make sure we put that in parentheses. 0.52 minus 0.58. Divide by square root. Now you'll notice I didn't put the minus zero in there, and some people are going like this. Wait, hey, 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 hey. How about the minus zero? Okay. You go ahead and put that in there. Don't need it. Uh, 0.55 times 0.45 divided by 125. Notice I'm not using any parentheses down there. Notice that for all the multiplication and division, I'm just using the actual signs themselves, right? Plus 0.55 times 0.45 divided by 125. And looks like we got negative 0.95. Isn't that N? Yeah, but isn't that N1 plus N2? No, 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 no ma'am. It's N1 on one side, N2 on the other side. Okay. So this is equal to negative 0.95. Okay. Negative 0.95. Now, do we reject or fail to reject HO? You fail to reject HO. So for part E, you fail to reject HO. For part F, what are we going to do to part F? So the way you would say this technically before I do that, let me press pause. I'll be right, right back with you for those of you watching at home. Good point. So the question was, uh, why did we not reject HO? Uh, the observation was made, but it is less than zero, so why aren't we rejecting it? We only reject it if it falls in the shaded area, right? So zero is in the middle, and this is the rejection region here. So negative 0.95 is actually a little bit less than negative 1, which is in the non-reject region. Okay, great question, though. Okay. Um, 
so the bottom line here is we are going to uh, fail to reject HO. So in essence, again, I'm not saying this as being a matter of fact. In essence, for your understanding and for your understanding only, I will call this true and this false. And again, these are not statistically the way you could do that. But to help you understand whether or not it's true or false and how this whole thing works out, I'm going with this. Okay. So if you fail to reject HO, you're saying that HO is in essence true and you're saying H1 is false. Now, which one's the claim? Is it HO or H1? It is H1. So to finish this up, it would look something like this. At a 0.05 level of significance, there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that P1 minus P2 is less than zero. So in essence, there'd be no reason to rush this drug off to the public because it doesn't seem to work. Can you explain to me again how you got the, the claims? What do you mean? Well, is P1 minus P2, the, why, why would you equal zero? But why would you do that? It's still kind of confusing. Okay. All right, give me one second. Let me, let me just uh, show the, um, the assumptions. I will just copy and paste. Oh, pooey. Not copy and pasting anything. Well, clearly that's not helped. Give me one second, Shavana. All right, so the question that is that's arisen now. All right, so the question that is that's arisen now is where does P1 minus P2 equal to zero come from? So if I give a group of people a drug and another people group of people a different drug, and I want to know whether or not they're both equally effective at doing something, the answer would be if they're the same, the percentage of one and the percentage of the other ought to be the same. So if 85% of the people cure cancer on the first one and 85% cure cancer on the second one, the two drugs are equally effective. Uh -huh. Which one do you use? Probably the cheaper of the two. Fair enough? Yes. Now, how do you know if one's better than the other? Well, the percentages would be different, mm -hmm. right? Because if the percentages are the same, you say they're equal. If one percentage is more than the other, then you might say it's better than, or if one percentage is less than, you might say it's worse, or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. Right? In this case, what we're saying is we're going to give a group of people a pill and we're going to see if it helps them not be hungry later on in the day, right? Um, if it helps people not be hungry, they'll eat less. If they eat less, they'll lose weight, right? It's kind of the idea here. The way you can test it is you give one group of people the pill, one group of people a placebo. And you tell the both groups, hey, this pill is going to make you feel less hungry. And you see if it's the same. If it's the same, you go like this. Well, then the pill had no effect. You know, just telling people to take a pill, it's going to work. I mean, you can give them, you know, you can give them a candy corn and go, hey, this magical candy corn is going to help you lose weight. You won't be hungry. And for some people, they'll go like this. You know, I think you're right. I'm not hungry right now. And it had nothing to do with the candy corn. It just had the fact that you told them that it was going to help them. Okay? And so if they're the same, then if you subtract them, they're equal to zero. Because, see, if they're the same, James, if they're the same, then P1 and P2 are equal. That's the measurement of they're equal. Well, if you subtract P2 to both sides, 
then P1 minus P2 would be equal to zero. And that's what you see. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, and the claim was H1, I believe, right? Yes, the claim was H1. Okay, so it was claiming that it was less than zero. So the claim was that the percentage of people who report being hungry is less than the percentage of people in the second group. Right. In this case, it would be that it worked. Okay. Yes, Jennifer. Now we're doing a confidence interval. Same problem. You say you got B right. Yeah, I read the formula on there. Well, hopefully you got A right, too. Because all you got to do for A is draw a picture and go like this. This is 0.95, this area is 0.025, this area is 0.025. Some of you go like this, oh my gosh, there's that picture again. Yes, you are right, there's that picture again. What's that value for 0.025? Where's my nerd? 1.96. Again, if you knew that off the top of your head, I am so proud of you. And you know you're a nerd, Janae, don't worry about it. Now, if you miss the formula, you shouldn't, because it's on the sheet, and you just got to be able to recognize when you see it which one it is. And I'll give you a hint. Confidence intervals always have less thans on them. I'm not being a jackass, I'm being serious. Confidence intervals always have less thans, and they always have E. Okay. It's ridiculous. For those of you watching at home, she thinks it's ridiculous. For those of you watching at home, I don't care what she thinks. She's just mad because she can't copy and paste like I did. <laughs> Part C, you got to do a little bit of work. Now, we should have the um, the numbers from last time, right? Mm -hmm. These? So we should have a part of it anyway. We got P hat 1 and P hat 2. So here's what we're going to do. Part C. Part C. We're going to go 0.52 minus 0.58. Again, I'll just use 0.58 there. Minus E, which is 1.96 times the square root of 0.52 times 0.48 divided by 125 plus... 0.58 Bless you. 0.58 times 0.42 all over 125 is less than P1 minus P2, which is less than that whole thing, but switch to a plus sign. Okay. Let's type that in. 0.52 minus 0.58 minus 1.96 times the square root 0.52 times 0.48 divided by 125 plus 0.58 times 0.42 divided by 125. So we got negative 0.18. So we got negative 0.18 on one side. Now you can just do the same thing, but switch a plus sign in front of the 1.96.
and you'll get 0.063. I sure can. Point oh, it's actually 0 0.183 and 0 0.063. So it's actually 0 0.183. Negative. Yeah. Negative. Negative 0.183. And what did I say the other one was? 0.063. Now I want you to notice something. Notice that zero is in the middle of these two. Does everybody see that? Zero is in the middle of these two. That's another way you can tell that you'd be re um, failing to reject HO. You see if zero wasn't in the middle of these two, this, then, in essence, becomes a hypothesis test, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay? Because a hypothesis test will test whether or not it's zero or not. And if you don't see zero in between this interval, well, then you know it's not, it can't be zero. Okay? Part D. We have to interpret. Now, this is where we're going to alter the interpretation a little bit. Yes, Shivana? Where did we get 0.42? 5, 8 minus 4, 2. Or, excuse me, 5, 8 minus, 1, 1 minus 0. 0.58. All right. Part D. If we continue to take samples in the same manner. Now, notice here, I'm not saying if we continue to take samples of size 125 the way I did before, because sometimes the sample sizes aren't always the same. So all I'm really saying is, look, if you keep doing it the way we've been doing it, then this is what's going to happen. So that's that first statement. If we continue to take samples in the same manner, we expect we expect 95% of the differences the proportions to be between negative 0.183 and 0 0.063. Part E, it's time for your uh, assumptions. I will cheat. This 9.3 or 9.2? 9.2. For your assumptions, I will cheat. And I will point out to you that this actually should be P hat 1. Q hat 1, P hat 2, and Q hat 2. Okay. With that being said, I'll stop the video.